Hi, my name is Gabby, also known as Mrs. Pigeon, and in today's video I am comparing the difference between the drawing software's Viral Packer and Patina, which is the Max answer to Microsoft Paint. So in this video I will be drawing the same random character that I imagined in my head and trying to draw them as similar to each other as I possibly can in both programs and we will see how it goes. So let's begin. Hopefully this video will not come across as quite biased. I love Fire Alpaca so much. It's my go-to software. I like it because it's free and it has so many good components that make it such a fantastic drawing software for digital artists. And I just, I just love it. So I discovered Fire Alpaca um, on a Google search because I was looking for software similar to Photoshop, which were like a cheap or free alternative because let's face it, I don't want to have to sell a kidney just so I can draw. <laughs> so yeah, Fire Alpaca is a free software. All you have to do when you open it is this little tiny ad pops up in a box and you just press OK. You just skip the ad, it's fine. And then you can just crack on and do your drawings. It's available for Mac and Windows, which is always good. And it does have very similar tools and features to Photoshop, like the magic wand tool and the use of layers and all that. This just it's just not as good because Photoshop's like a grand and Fire Pack is free. So obviously you'll get what you pay for with Photoshop and it will be better, but it's still such a good free alternative. So please just sit back and enjoy the rest of this drawing and I'll speak to y'all in a second. So like I said earlier, Patina is basically Mac's answer to the Windows software Microsoft Paint. The biggest difference is MS Paint automatically comes with your Windows laptop or computer, whereas Patina I had to buy from the App Store. <laughs> but it's fine, it's all for a video, it's all for a good cause. The programs are extremely similar to each other. The only reason I got Patina is because you can't legally or safely get MS Paint on your Mac or MacBook, as far as I'm aware. I did have a little nose around, especially for this video, but I couldn't find it. So please let me know if you can. The main difference between the two I noticed was that, if I remember correctly, MS Paint had a little spray can tool, which was kind of like a half empty graffiti can. And it had this very pixelated dotted effect, which I would have found quite handy on makeup of the character, like the highlights, the blush, the eyeshadow. But I had to make do with what I had. But I don't mind. This is all a big experiment. I don't mind it. And much like MS Paint, Patina is a predominantly pixel based program. Uh, it doesn't look like it because I use a very big canvas, so it's all very zoomed out. Um, but when you zoom in, you can see that every line is pixelated. But anyway, please enjoy the rest of this drawing, which is as similar as it could be as before, but with more of a struggle. <laughs> So then, let's get down to business and compare these bad boys. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of Fire Alpaca, I'm obviously taking into account very similar programs and obviously the more advanced ones like Photoshop. Um, and the first thing I want to point out which is really good is the wide array of pen tools, which I kind of mentioned earlier. There are different pen tools in Fire Alpaca and similar softwares. And with paint, again, like I said earlier, 
predominantly pixel pencils and, and pens. There is a sort of feathered paintbrush which you could get in paint but it's not very handy when it comes to colouring in. I find anyway, I kind of find it quite a pointless tool. And then obviously paint also has that little spray can pen, if you even call it a pen, I don't know. <laughs> but that's, that's one big difference I noticed. Another one kind of similarly with the pens is that when you draw with a pen on Fire Alpaca or something similar, you can sort of change the opacity of the stroke and also the thickness of the stroke based on your pen pressure on your tablet, which is very handy, especially for someone who also draws traditional artwork. You know, it's it's much like using a pen or a pencil on paper when you do that, which is, which is pretty fun and dandy, but you can't do that on paint or patina. A very key difference, which I also brushed upon before, is the use of layers. So Fire Alpaca, Photoshop and other software you can use different layers which is so handy when it comes to sketching when it comes to applying different sort of color blends when it comes to shading adding small details uh, masking all of that is very very easy to do with the use of layers and it's it's one of the things that makes digital art fantastic is the use of layers as well in my opinion and you can't you can't do that in paint and patina so sketching as you saw and shading just took a little bit longer than it should have done Another thing that was very apparently missing in Paint and Patina was the magic wand tool. So being able to select different parts of the canvas just by clicking, uh, that's very handy if you want to focus some details on a small area, or if you wanted to like select the outline of, of what you've drawn and expand the selection so you can use a shadow or you can make it glow or give it an outline. Things like that is very handy and you don't get that in Paint and Patina. The closest thing you can have is a selection tool, which is like a, you could do a box or you could do free form, but all it really allows you to do is sort of move what you've selected within the canvas or like cut it or copy and paste it but you can't do any sort of artwork focus in that area because as soon as you click on a different tool, your selection disappears. It's, it's like paint and patina think, oh, you're done with that now and <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Another fantastic thing that you can do in, in Fire Alpaca and others is the ability to use gradients and patterns. Like you fill in with the paint bucket. It works so well for any smooth looks you want to have. If you were doing a sunset, for example, you can choose different colors and put in a gradient. Um, and as you saw, I coloured in the lady's hair, the dip dye, with the gradient tool in Fire Alpaca. Whereas in Paint and Patina, because everything is predominantly pixelated, uh, I had to manually do that gradient, which didn't look as nice and took very long. I can't remember how long it took, but it did take quite a while. And yeah, it didn't have quite as nice of an effect, in my opinion. And another thing which I think a lot of people, I think this is why a lot of people went astray from paint and probably would with patina as well, is that you can't use transparency in your canvas. So if you um, just wanted to draw a character and you didn't want a background, this is what people do with like logos and buttons and when they do designs for websites, they usually use a transparent PNG. You can draw a character and you don't have to worry about a background, it would just be invisible behind it. You can't do that in paint and patina and I think it's to do with the fact you can't use layers. Um, despite the fact that you can save the image as a PNG, <laughs> which kind of is confusing. So by default, you'll always have a white background in paint and patina, unless you change that color, but you can't make that color transparent. It's like with my first ever drawings on, on my old DeviantArt page, they were all done in paint and they all had a white background. Um, so being able to have a transparent background is always nice. I mean, it's nice to have the option too anyway. <laughs> Now the next couple of things I want to talk about are not so much about how you put the art on the canvas, but more so how you use the software, how you navigate through the software. So something that really sort of ground my gears when I was using Patina, and I think it is the same for MS Paint, is there's a lack of keyboard shortcuts. Or maybe they were there, but they were different. And I did have a little sort of play with my keyboard and I couldn't find the following keyboard shortcuts. So one of them was, being able to zoom in and out with a keyboard shortcut. Um, speaking completely on behalf of Fire Alpaca here, um, on a MacBook, all you need to do is hold down the command key, or if it's Windows, the control key, and then use the plus and minus keys to zoom in and out, or you can sort of scroll on your mouse. Whereas with Patina, and I do think this is the same for paint, you have to manually click on the magnifying glass tool button 
and then move the dial up and down to zoom in and out and I just thought that was very tedious and it definitely slows you down like take all the time you need with the actual drawing and coloring and stuff with your artwork but the little in-betweeny bits I think they should be like a sort of quick and easy job and I really couldn't do that with my patina drawing and I did find that really annoying I found myself trying to zoom in using the keyboard shortcut I had the same problem with the color swatching so to be able to select a color within the canvas which is always very very handy with fire alpaca you can just hold down the command key and the cursor will just turn into the color swatch tool and you can hover it over a color and click it with paint and fire alpaca you have to again you have to click on the little color swatch button and then click on the color you want and i just again I, it's not a big deal but i'd found that quite annoying but those are like the main differences I noticed. There are probably quite a few more just because there is a very big difference between the elements between two softwares or three if you count paint as well. But anyway, what can I conclude from this? How can I sum this up for anyone who's genuinely watching this because they genuinely want to know? All I can say is obviously I am favoring Fire Alpaca a little bit just because that's the software I use and it's free and I think it's a great software. But for like your first drawing software for digital art, I feel like paint and patina aren't terrible softwares. And if you're someone that predominantly works with pixels, like you like to draw with pixels or you draw sprites, I, I don't think paint and patina are actually that bad at all. Like I said, I started off with MS Paint, which I mean, the drawings, <laughs> they're, not, they're not good, but that's not paint's fault. I didn't have a tablet. And let's face it, I didn't have the skills within me. So <laughs> that's why they didn't look fantastic. But these would be good softwares for you and MS Paint's free as well. So no wazza. And um, another good thing about Fire Alpaca is you get your little little cool guy in the corner there with his, his little bow tie and all that. I'll see why it's called Fire Alpaca because he's looking hot. But yeah, that, that's all for my video. And I hope it was quite informative. I hope I articulated myself enough. <laughs> so, thank you very much for watching slash listening. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you can give the video a like. If you'd like to share it with your buddies, then go ahead. If you'd like to see the rest, you can subscribe to The Pigeon's Nest. Please let me know what you want to see next, because I do run out of ideas. <laughs> and don't forget to whack that bell button so that you know I'm there, and also so that I know you're there. <laughs> Bye!